Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming to my session. My name is Kayleen. I'm a life rate consultant and I've been a consultant for four years now. I'm excited to be sharing you today uh, on extending life rate with OSGI. So you might be asking yourself, what is extending life rate? And I'm going to answer that question with a quick example. So this is a screenshot of life rate DXP. You might recognize this. Um, up at the top of the screen is the control menu, and out of the box, this shows for every user. Now, two of my DXP clients have asked me to customize it so that only shows for some users. And now this customization of an out-of-the-box life ray uh, feature is exactly what we mean by extending life ray. So what does that mean for OSGI? Well, first, we're going to go over what OSGI is and the relationship it has with life ray. After that, we're going to go over a sampling of some extension points. We're not going to be able to cover all the extension points in LifeRay, or we'd be here till the next major release of LifeRay. And then lastly, we're going to go over how you can discover some extension points yourself, since we cannot cover them all here today. So what is OSGI? What it actually stands for doesn't really matter. What you need to know about OSGI is that it's a set of specifications for modular development in Java. And it was first introduced into LifeRay in DXP and 7.0. And just like how LifeRay sits inside of an application server such as Tomcat or JBoss, an OSGI container sits inside of LifeRay and manages our plugins for us. Oops. So a little bit more on OSGI and some terminology. Uh, you might see it modules uh, referred to in LifeRay. Those are the same as OSGI bundles if you look at documentation outside of LifeRay. So modules are the smallest uh, unit of deployment in LifeRay, and really all you need for an OSGI module is a manifest file. But that's really no fun because there's no functionality in that. So to add functionality, you have resources such as your JSP files, properties files, JS files, CSS files, et cetera, and also your Java classes. And a subset of those Java classes can be created or made into OSGI components. And some types of components are listed here, services, servlets, portlets, which we'll go over in a little bit, shell commands, and controller actions. So for those of you who have developed in LifeRay 6.2, this might look a little bit familiar. This is a portlet XML, and this is how we used to configure portlets in LifeRay. So we're specifying some properties of our portlet, but this is not the only thing that we need to have an MVC portlet. We also need a Java class in 6.2. So a little bit complicated having two different files to maintain. We simplified this with OSGI uh, declarative services in DXP. So here in the highlighted area is our declarative service uh, component annotation. This might look a little bit familiar to the, uh, similar to the portlet XML, and we're doing the same thing as what the portlet XML did. So we're defining our portlet properties here at the top of the file. So combining the portlet XML and the Java class into one class. So three important things to take away about OSGI and LifeRay. The first is that modules can contain components. Components can be created easily using declarative services. And lastly, components can extend LifeRay functionality, though as we have seen with the MVC portlet, that's not the only thing that components are capable of doing. So we have seen that OSGI is a powerful way to customize LifeRay, but I want to leave you guys with a little bit of a warning. When you're uh, uh, creating your own extension points, make sure, or sorry, leveraging extension points, be cautious and use documentation as you go on. And just to drive that point home, this is a snippet of some of our documentation on dev.liferay. We teach you how to overwrite a JSP using the portal API, and we also show you how not to do it using a non-portal API, okay? So I want to go over a sampling of extension points that I have seen on my client projects as well as some of uh, my other colleagues. So LifeRay allows you to extend uh, in many different ways, back end and the front end and other things as well. So the first thing that we're gonna go over is the back end. 
The service tracker is an example of a backend extension point. It allows you to use OSGI classes and non-OSGI classes. The indexer post processor allows you to customize the LifeRay search feature. That's both indexing and searching in LifeRay. And lifecycle events allow you to do custom actions on certain events, such as uh, portal startup, user login, user logout, portal shutdown, and many others. Moving on to the UI now. You can override GSPs. And you can also customize out of the box uh, portlet functionality by overriding MVC commands. You can use the resource bundle type component to override language keys. And a really powerful tool is using application display templates for certain out of the box uh, portlets in LifeRay. And you can configure the look and feel or change the look and feel of the portlet completely. So now we're gonna go over how to find an extension point. Um, so the business has given us a requirement and that's to search users by their birthday. So we're gonna confirm in the UI first that this is not uh, an existing feature in LifeRay. I pull up a uh, LifeRay DXP vanilla bundle and type in 1970, the year that test test was born and search for that and find that no users come up for no results show. So we confirm that in the UI. And now, so how do I go about confirming that in the code? Firstly, get a copy of LifeRay source. For the CE users, that's available in SourceForge, which is the link here. And for uh, subscribers, you can find that on customer.liferay. Okay, the second thing is to determine the functionality that you wanna change. And our business has told us that they wanna be able to search for users by their birthday. Okay, continuing on to step three, take your business requirements and search the source code, uh, sorry, take your business requirements and identify certain keywords that you would search for in your source code, such as birthday or indexer, because those are the things that we want to customize. And if you're trying to customize a feature that you can see directly in the UI, you can use your browser dev tools to search for uh, specific CSS classes, div IDs, and search for those in your source code. Okay, so the indexer in LifeRay out of the box uh, indexes our entities, our service builder entities. So I'm gonna go take a look at our service XMLs and search for the field birthday. Okay. And this is the result that I get. I find that the birthday resides in the contact entity. So our next step is to look for the class that will index the contact entity. And based on life rate naming conventions, that would be the contact indexer class. So going into the contact indexer class, so you can see that back there, the fields that are being indexed here are the company ID, modified date, user ID, username, email address, first name, full name, job title, last name, middle name, but no birthday. So now we know for sure that we have to go and implement this feature for ourselves. So earlier I spoke of the indexer post processor and that is the type of extension point that we're going to be using in this case. Here's part of the solution. We're creating the indexer post processor um, and then creating that using declarative services just in the same way that we did for the MVC portlet. We're configuring the property and uh, matching our indexer post processor class to the contact model and declaring it as the indexer post processor type of service. See in the third line of the component annotation, okay? And then below in our class, we're using the post process document method to add the birthday to the document that is being indexed with the contact. And this is just a partial solution. The rest of the solution, you would need to implement the actual searching for the birthday in the, the document. Okay, so the final result would look something like this. When you type in 1970 into your out of the box life ray search portlet, you get the test test user. So there are many extension points in, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. 
So that was just one way to find additional extension points if you could not find documentation for it. Another way is this tutorial here, which is um, on the library documentation. It's based on UI and GoGo Shell, if you can use the GoGo Shell. Okay, so there are myriad ways to extend Liferay. Really, the sky is the limit to how you want to do your digital transformation. And OSGI has simplified some of making some of these extensions in some ways. So if that has you interested and inspired to make your own uh, extensions, uh, I would encourage you to go to Eric Chin's talk about common and recommended practices for developing in Liferay, and Greg's talk tomorrow about how the developer experience has improved in 7.1. And here are a list of resources when these slides become available. The first is a repository of examples that we make available to you guys about how to uh, write your extensions, and then some links to some documentation as well. Okay. All right, thank you for coming to my session. If there's any questions, I can take them now. Any questions? Uh, do you support versioning of OSGI components? Sorry? Do you support versioning? Is it possible to have same OSGI with two different versions at the same time? So the same component with two different versions? Yes. Uh, yes, it should be. Yeah. yeah the OSGI container that, will yeah. manage it for you. That is, yeah. according to the standard OSGI rules, yes. We're not doing anything special there. More questions? We have time. Dave. Actually, it's a very simple one. Going back to your first example, how did you configure the control menu only to show for certain types of user? So we've been you trying to, to customize to... that, and it never <laughs> deploys properly. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Your first example was yeah. to, you said you had a requirement for the control menu to yeah. only show for certain users. We've only the been able to do that in a theme. Okay. Not within a JSP or override or anything. That's right, but like that's still customizing, or customize, this was just a over, a simple example about how to, or like what extending life so, was. So did you do it in the JSP or did you do oh, it in, in the, the theme? theme. Sorry. In the theme. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to know how you can extend it in the JSP. Oh, okay. If you want to show certain things to certain people. <laughs> Does that extend in the JSP, like override the JSP that does it? Yeah. I happen to have an opinion on that, which is uh, you should be able, yes, but you should not be willing to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's just a maintenance effort because that JSP changes, it's the implementation. So, and this was, this was all about introducing a component that does it for you, which will be maintainable in the future. Uh, so it's all on API while JSP is all on implementation. Yeah, there's a way to extend that personal bar. I'm not sure what the classes are, but mm -hmm. if you implement the right class yep. or extend the right class like you did with the service, the yep. post processors, you can put additional personal bar items up there. Yeah, that is another extension point. Yeah, you can right. add different. I think that's what you're kind of referring to there. Yes. Um, right. Well, in this example, the client wanted the bar to be completely removed because they didn't want them to be able to access the sidebar. Okay, okay, I see you took it off, right, yeah. yeah. But you can actually add icons up there. Yeah, you could add icons as yeah. well. I think I'm always getting that wording wrong, but I think the personal bar, isn't that the thing with the TT in there? I think so. There's I'm not 100% sure. There. This is what I'm, what I'm always like, wow, really. Uh, I think it's called a control menu. So if you look in the theme, there's a, um, a tag that says control menu in there. But based on what you're saying, yeah, you can add additional OSGI components to do that. Are, is there any bank of examples of these types of projects, uh, like much more complex ones, such as LDAP uh, extension or 
I Are there any? Yeah, specifically for LDAP, we should have documentation on that. Uh, but more complex examples, I don't know if they exist. In our repository, they're very simple examples. Yeah, going back to your don't override to JSP comment, because it adds maintainability issues. Mm -hmm. We're having a lot of problems because we had to overwrite JSPs in identifying the right version dependencies to include in our Gradle build files and the like. So mm -hmm. we're, we're doing one simple JSP edit. We check what iframe may have changed between two different fix packs from source code, make sure that's covered in our version of that new JSP. But then it, it takes like half a day to work out exactly what versions we should be using uh, in the build Gradle files. Are there any tools or, or tips on how we get to the bottom of that? You know, we, we may need Liferay, com Liferay dot portal dot util version 73, for example, matched with SP54. But what, how would we know it was going to be 73? We had to guess. That's what we have to declare it to, to build the systems. I can step in there and say, so you, uh, you probably know David Nebinger's uh, comment, so you take the minimum version that you need, uh, which means a little bit of trial and error, so how low can I go and it still works? Yes. Uh, well, that's basically what you can do is you can look at your current version, like the currently running version that you have, uh, and declare that as the, as the minimum and accept that you will never go back. That kind of is, is okay when you're developing in-house. Uh, so when you do an in-house development, you can just develop for your current version or any later. When you do a marketplace plugin, then you want to go as low as possible. Uh, go, go, shell. That's at least one way to do it. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me for the command from the top of my head. Does anybody know? Go, go, shell, command, package level, votes taken, B. B. B doesn't do it. C, D, E. <laughs> no. <laughs> B is the B in the bundle ID. 